There we go. Alrighty. Hello, Jacksonites, and welcome to the first review of a series that I'm actually pretty excited to get into. Uh, as you just uh, heard previously when I did my first video for today, I uh, decided I was going to start my Gamera Palooza. I'm just going to call it my Gamera Palooza, though I'm not going to actually call it that in the title, but it's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to start my Gamera series uh, tonight instead of the 1st of September. Partially because, A, I have today off and tomorrow afternoon off. And sat the actual 1st of September, I'm going to be gone for a, a good majority of the day. So I figure, what the hell. Um, so yes, indeed. Today I am starting my Gamera series uh, review. Starting with, of course, the one that started it all. Gamera the Giant Monster from 1965. Ironically, even though I I own both franchises of Godzilla and Gamera on Blu-ray, Gamera is the only one where I where the vast majority of the series I own on Blu-ray. And that's mostly because the Blu-rays for Gamera movies are really cheap. Um, but whatever. So yes, indeed, I am beginning Gamera, starting with Gamera the Giant Monster. I of course have previously talked about. Gamera the Giant Monster, and my top 20 favorite kaiju movies list, um, which I still do stand by that. I do really do like the original Gamera film. Uh, so what is my history with the original Gamera? Well, I actually didn't really see this movie until I got to be a lot older. I first heard of Gamera through James Rolfe when he did his top 10 giant movie monsters video. Way back in the day when this is when I first became actually, ironically, that video was the first James Rolfe video that I ever saw. Yes, indeed. Get ready for Kenny's. Oh, don't get me started on that. But uh, thankfully, oh, actually, no, this movie does have a Kenny, but whatever. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So I, of course, watched James Rolfe's video, and I think it was number four. Yeah, it was number four on his list uh, that was Gamera. And that was the first time I'd ever seen and heard the name Gamera. And, of course, I, I was a little interested because I was a big guy. Of course, back then, I was a big Godzilla fan. Still am, but... um, So that got me curious, and I said, well, what's Gamera? And, of course, I looked up the Gamera series on Wikipedia, and I read all the plots for all the Gamera movies... And I was interested. And I would watch clips of Gamera movies on YouTube. Uh, actually, the one that I watched the most clips from, ironically, was Gamera vs. Guiron. Uh, I had I'd been aware that the original Gamera was in black and white. Excuse me. And I said to myself, well, yeah, this is going to be one of those franchises where it, it truly is a ripoff where they start out as being where the monsters start out as being in black and white, being dark, and being bad guys. And this movie is no exception. Um, so as the years went by, I mean, I'll admit I am nowhere near as much of a Gamera fan as I am a Godzilla fan, of course. I've never met anybody who said, on a pure fundamental level, they prefer Gamera over Godzilla. I've never heard that. That probably never will happen, uh, except for me, <laughs> except for maybe one. Uh, my ex girlfriend's mom. She always told me she was a really big Gamera fan. In fact, going back to Gamera versus Guiron for just a minute, she always told me that when when she saw Gamera hacking into Gamera's shell, she would start screaming to her mom, saying, "My Gamera is gonna die." <laughs> um, but <laughs> anyway. So, I think I was around 14 when I finally decided, you know what, I want to try to buy some Gamera movies. Oh, wait, no, I was, I was around 15. I want to try to buy some Gamera movies, but I decided that I really wasn't all that interested in the Showa Gamera movies. Um, I wanted to see the Heisei series. I was really interested in seeing the Heisei Gamera trilogy. 
And so on lo, lo and behold, on Amazon.com, there was the Mill Creek triple pack of the uh, Gamera, uh, Heisei Gamera series on Blu-ray. Uh, I was really pissed off. I remember I was really pissed off at the time because I said to myself, why are these only on Blu-ray? But whatever, I decided to buy them anyway. And I borrowed my Aunt Terry's PS3 because I didn't have a Blu-ray player at the time. I bought the PS3 and I watched the Heisei Gamera trilogy on, on Blu-ray for the first time in full in Japanese. And uh, at the time I was entertained. Uh, but it wasn't until about a year later when somebody had managed to upload the entire Showa Gamera series on uh, on YouTube, and I watched the first Gamera. Yes, I'll make a picture. I know of Gamera the Brave. I just got done watching that a couple days ago. Uh, I watched the original. No, it wasn't the original Gamera. It was Gamera versus Barugan, which I remember really enjoying. Gamera versus Jiger, and a little bit of Gamera versus Zigra. I watched um, those two two and a half movies on YouTube, and I remember liking Barugan. Kind of liking parts of Jiger and thought Zigra was just boring as shit. More on that later when I get to Gamma versus Zigra. But it wasn't until finally about about another year later again when I discovered the Gamera Legacy Collection. At the time, I think it was brand new, so it was like eighteen bucks. But I picked it up from Amazon and I finally got the first eleven. Gamera movies on DVD. I was especially glad that I got the Heisei Gamera trilogy on DVD, uh, not Blu-ray, so I could watch them more readily. Um, of course, now I have a Blu-ray DVD player, so it doesn't really matter, but you know what I mean. So I finally sat down and I watched all 11, at least at the time, all 11 Gamera movies over the course of three days. I watched one, two, and three on one day. I watched the rest of the series the following day, and then I wa I rewatched the Heisei Gamera trilogy the third day. And boy, did it take a lot out of me. It took a lot out of me. I liked the first two. I liked parts of three. Then after that, it was a really rough go until the Heisei trilogy. And that's also when the Heisei trilogy started to falter for me. So then I just let it sit. I just let the Gamera movies sit for a long time uh, until I was about 20 when I finally decided to get all the Gamera movies on Blu ray and I gave the Legacy Collection to a friend of mine who moved away. Uh, but I gave all those to him and I got all these on Blu ray. And by the way, the Blu ray, these Blu ray packs are very, very inexpensive. I think this one cost me 10, Volume 2 cost me 8. And the trilogy cost me nine. Though ironically, <laughs> Gamera the Brave was the most expensive Gamera movie I ever bought, which cost me $25. Even though I do like the movie, I'm starting to think, eh, maybe it was a little worth it. But that's beside the point. I'll get to that when I get to Gamera the Brave. Um, so when I bought these, I, I remember the first of this pack that I watched actually was um, Gamera the Giant Monster. And as I said in my video, I remember really, really enjoying it the second time around. Because it was only... The, no, no, that's second time. Third time, excuse me. I remember really watching it the third time. Around. I guess third time's a charm. It was the third time when I watched the movie when it finally clicked with me. And I found, I found myself thoroughly enjoying uh, the first Gamera movie. Also, one big thing that I'm forgetting... Another thing that sparked my interest, re-sparked my interest in the Gamera movies, was when a certain YouTuber did his Gamera Palooza. That, of course, being Zazabar. When Zaz I Gamera Palooza for me came out at a very, very fun time in my life. It was right before. No, 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 not right before. It was during the Godzilla 2014 hype that was going around. And uh, I just remember being really excited for Gamera Palooza uh, when Bill did those videos. And I would, I would like, rewatch 
when one episode was uploaded, I would rewatch it again and again and again and again and again and again in preparation for the next uh, Gamera review. Uh, then, of course, when that would happen, I watched two videos again and again, then so on and so forth. So finally, I watched the entire series in one day. I loved Gamera Palooza. I thought it was a fantastic, fantastic series. And in some ways, I'm, Bill, if you ever see this, I think I just may prefer Gamera Palooza over Godzilla Palooza for, for a number of reasons. Not to say that Godzilla Palooza is bad. I still do thoroughly enjoy Godzilla Palooza, but... I just think Gamera Palooza came out at a good time in my life, and I just found myself really, really, really enjoying it. Uh, so that re-sparked my interest in the Gamera series. It also made me aware of how terrible some Gamera movies are. <laughs> uh, though thankfully, at least the series does start out strong. So, with all that being said, my history of the Gamera series out the way, uh, and my... Uh, that's pretty much it. My history with the, with the Gamera series out the way. Let's finally get into the original Gamera. As far as production history goes for this movie, for the entire Gamera series, I'm really not that familiar with a lot of its production history, though I do know a couple of things. One is that Gamera the Giant Monster actually did not start out as a giant monster movie. So the original Gamera was directed by a man named Noriaki Yuasa, who I wouldn't be surprised if some people have called Noriaki Yuasa the Ishiro Honda of Gamera movies. Because of the Gamera series, Noriaki Yuasa directed seven, seven Gamera movies. He directed Giant Monster, Gauss, Virus, Guiron, Jiger, Zigra, and Super Monster. Oh dear. Poor man. Um, uh, he did do the special effects for Gamma vs. Barrigan, but he essentially, he's kind of both the Ishiro Honda and the AG Subaraya of the Gamera franchise because he was so heavily involved with the entire franchise uh, as Ishiro Honda and um A.G. Superaya were uh, involved with the Godzilla franchise. But it's an interesting story on how this movie originally was supposed to be. So Noriaki Yuasa had initially began production on a horror movie that he wanted to make called uh, The Great Rat Swarm, or as it was titled in Japan, Dai Gunju Nizara. Uh, which would involve mutated giant rats crawling over miniatures of cities, or essentially being a, a giant infestation of rats. Uh, how do you go from rats to turtles? Am I... Where the hell have I heard that before? Am I just going crazy? So anyway. Um, so yes, the original idea for the first Gamera movie was to have a giant rats movie. However, the rats that they received for this movie uh, had diseases and fleas, which was obviously a big health hazard uh, for the film at the time. So the production for The Great Rat Swarm was put on halt. So then, of course, the Japanese, the Japanese film studio called Dai Film, or I think that's what it was called. Yeah, Dai Film. Uh, saw the success of Toho's Godzilla series, and they decided that, hey, we want to do something that could potentially rival that. So they decided to make a giant monster series of its own. And as the miniatures for the film for uh, the Great Rats one were already built, Masaichi Nagata, who I think was the special effects guy for this film, had the idea to develop a, a giant flying turtle attack Tokyo instead of giant rats. Or wait, no. Who, who was... Mas Hang on, let me look. 
Okay, no, hang on. I was wrong. Mas uh, Masaichi Nagata was not the special effects guy. That was Ryosaku Takayama. He designed the turtle suit for the film, and he was all he was a big part of the special effects uh, crew. And the original Gamera had a budget of about 40 million yen, which I think was a pretty decent movie. Or not a decent movie. I think it was a pretty decent sized budget for a Japanese film at the time, even though this movie is in black and white, but whatever. Um, so the original Gamera movie was made and it was released in 1965 to generally favorable reviews, and it turned out to be a massive, massive success. An unexpected massive success. It was kind of compare, I kind of compare it to the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Um, from what I've heard, Disney didn't expect the first Pirates movie to be as successful as it was. In fact, it had a budget of $140 million, and I think it made almost $700 million uh, worldwide. That's a pretty good uh, return investment. So the first Gamera movie was a big success, and of course, that's what led to it getting a franchise of its own. Uh so with all that being said, let's get into the plot of the first Gamera film, shall we? In an icy North American region, an unknown flying aircraft is shot down uh, by a fighter by an American fighter jet that just so happen, happened to be carrying an atomic bomb. A low-level atomic bomb, but still an atomic bomb nonetheless. Of course, the aircraft crashes, which causes it to explode. And this resulting explosion awakens a giant prehistoric monster known as Gamera, who has the appearance of a giant turtle with teeth and large tusks uh, and breathes fire and flies around like a flying saucer. Uh, however, at this time, pretty conveniently, Japanese scientists on an expedition, including Dr. Hidaka, a girl named Kyoko and a man named Aoyaki nearby are given what's known as a devil stone by an Eskimo chieftain who explains that the creature on this stone is called Gamera. Gamera then proceeds to destroy an American jet with his fire breath and he escapes into the sea. Uh, and also he destroys the expedition ship in the process, killing most men in the in the destruction of the ship. So Gamera destroys... Or wait, hang on. After destroying the American jet he, jet, he escapes into the sea, and Gamera heads to Japan, and he surfaces from Sagami Bay, where a young boy named Toshio, being forced to release his own pet turtle by his asshole father, uh, sees him, and Gamera destroys the city of Fujisawa and a lighthouse... However, Toshio is rescued by Gamera when falling from that same lighthouse. Oh, God, Toshio. And retreats back into the sea. Scientists and government officials hold a conference uh, to discuss a way to kill Gamera. Pretty typical uh, giant monster movie fashion at this point. Gamera then destroys a research ship, kills the crew, and then heads to Tokyo. And he is attacked by the gov by the Japanese government with a experimental freeze bomb because they figure, well, if Gamera feeds on fire, which is established in this movie, he feeds on fire. That's why he causes destruction is because he's hungry. Uh, they just so happen to have an experimental type of freeze bomb that they used um on Gamera, and it does succeed, but the catch is that the freeze, the freezing effects only last 10 minutes. However, they are able to implant explosive devices into Gamera, into the uh, mountain that Gamera is on, and they blow it up, which causes Gamera to fall, fall on his back as a result. And the scientists indicate that a turtle cannot right itself once it's on its back, and that Garefor will therefore, therefore die of starvation because of his lack of being able to feed on fire. However, Gamera pulls in his head, limbs, and tail into his shell, and he emits flames out his arm and leg cavities, 
and flies away by rising up into and spinning around the air like a flying saucer. What? Toshio and his family decide to stay with an uncle in Tokyo because their home was destroyed by Gamera and they have nowhere else to go. And Toshio explains to the professor that Gamera is lonely and is like regular turtles, but he is not evil. Dr. Hidaka, in the meantime, has discovered that Gamera consumes fossil fuels and he may end up seeking out atomic bombs for the energy they provide. And he also finds out that he emits radio signals, though this isn't really a uh, explored upon in the film. And the only theory is that because Gamera is radioactive, because he was awakened by an atomic bomb, which is the, is the reason why he gives off radio signals, but it's not really explained all that well. This leads to the Japan, Japan Atomic Energy Commission to figure out what to do uh, with all its stockpiles of bombs. Uh, but, on the, but while this is going on, disasters and accidents start to occur throughout Japan. Koto Ward is struck by flash floods and ships collide in Tokyo Bay. Uh, and Dr. Hidaka says that Gamera has caused these accidents because he's hiding inside Tokyo Bay. What? And an international science conference is, is called, and they decide to use something called the Z Plan based at Oshima Island uh, involving a consortium of Japan, Soviet, and Japanese scientists uh, to, to find, figure out a way to eradicate Gamera. However, before any action is taken, Gamera lands at Haneda Airport destroys the control tower, and proceeds to go on a massive rampage throughout Tokyo, which includes destroying Tokyo Tower, uh, which is probably the best scene in the film. Tosho and his family evacuate again, but like the little bastard that he is, Toshio disappears. Z-Plan is still not ready, and the scientists just decide to try to keep Gamera at bay in the meantime by confining him to an oil refinery. Dr. Hidaka has surmised that Gamera is gaining energy by consuming fire at the refinery, and they will therefore keep shipping petroleum there uh, by train car to keep Gamera occupied for at least the next 24 hours. However, Tosho uh, has found his way to the refinery and sneaks on board the train to Gamera, chased by the refinery headman, where they are both thrown from the train when it explodes... Uh, because Toshio was trying to sabotage the plan to keep Gamera occupied. They are then, unfortunately, unharmed, and Toshio is sent on his way. But, of course, he makes his way back. God damn, I hate Toshio. But in the meantime, Z plan is completed and Toshio sneaks on board the ship delivering supplies to Oshima. Can he just fucking kill this kid? Jesus. Gamera is lured to Oshima by lightning by lighting an oil slick path from Tokyo to the island, but an oncoming typhoon blows all the air out, of course, plot convenience. Aoyagi starts a bonfire, and Gamera makes his way to a massive volcano erupting on the island. And the next day, Z-Plan is put into action. Gamera is lured to a rocket. Yeah, lured inside a rocket and is blasted off into Mars because they just can't kill Gamera. I'll get to that later. The worldwide announcement of success... Um, extols the triumph of science over ideology and Aoyagi and Kyoko go off together to do something and Tosho decides he is not sad because he is going to be a scientist so he can go visit Gamera one day. No, you're not, kid. I like to think of Tokyo, or Toshio is one of those kids who gets killed by Barrogan in the next movie. <laughs> so a joke, uh, couple jokes aside, what about this plot? Um, uh, 
Uh, KPF, I just got your message. I think Sunday would be a better day for us to do Berrigan, even though I would not like to wait that long. I guess we have no choice. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So how about this plot for the original Gamera? Well, for 1965, a lot of it is pretty typical. Um, but just because it's typical doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Um, for this being a, a bit of a generic monster movie for the sixties in Japan at the time, it's not bad. It's really not. It's a very good start, uh, to a semi-decent franchise, as I said in my first review, but, um, it's a very good start. I do like this plot. It's not too complicated. It's not too simple. Well, it is kind of simple, but uh, there's just a lot of stuff that happens in it. That, so that, I guess that kind of distracts you from the fact that it might be a little simple. Um, and all the stuff with the, done with the military and the monster is, is again, it's typical, but it's very well done typical stuff. So that's why I, I think that's one reason why I do like this movie as much as I do. Um... So with all that said about the plot, let's get to the pros and the cons of the original Gamera, shall we? So pro number one is Dr. Hidaka, played by... Oh, God damn, I just exited out of the, of the Gamera page. Hang on one second. Dr. Hidaka is played by Eiji Funakoshi. And while the human cast isn't, there's not much to say about the human cast with this movie. Dr. Hidaka is easily the best character in the entire movie because he, he's, he is very well acted. Uh, despite this guy not being no Takashi uh, Shimura, and I'll, I'll explain that reference in just a minute. Uh, but he's very well acted. He's got some good dialogue. Uh, all the scenes with him on screen, they're engaging to watch. He's very proactive with the military and other scientists to try to eradicate Gamera. He, uh, he's just a likable character to attach yourself to. Unlike Dr. Yamane, now, it's very, very, very obvious that Dr. Hidaka is a giant ripoff of Dr. Yamane from the original Gojira. He kind of looks like him. He has a similar enough profession in science that he is ahead of. Um, he has a bit of a similar mind. Well, actually, no, not really. Yamane wants to preserve Godzilla, whereas uh, Hidaka wants to realizes that yeah gamma is a big threat we need to get rid of this guy um but he is still dripping with humanity in the process kind of like dr yamane but so it's very obvious that dr hidaka is a big ripoff of dr yamane but still hidaka is still easily the best character in this movie he's the most engaging he's the most um likable he's the one you can latch yourself onto the most so I re uh, Dr. Hidaka, he's a, he's a typical character, but again, he's a good typical character. He is entertaining to watch. Um, 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 uh. Pro number two is the ending to this movie, specifically the way they figure out a way to get rid of Gamera. As, instead of some super weapon that they try to use against the monster that they pull out right out of their ass at the last minute. Uh, instead of just bombarding the ever living shit out of Gamera with uh, bullets, bombs and missiles just until he's dead. They just trap him inside a rocket and they shoot him off into space. Let Mars be their problem. Uh, or wait, no, let Mars be Gamera's problem, not ours. Um, I can't see that I've seen a giant monster movie that just captures the monster and shoots them off into space uh, to get rid of them. Can't say that I've ever seen that before. Um, so it certainly is original. I will give it that. Um, so, yeah, 
I like the way that they they come up with to get rid of Gamera. It certainly is original, and it's kind of a shame we don't we haven't really seen anything like it since. Uh, la la la. Pro number three is that despite this movie having a bit of a lower budget, um, God damn, my arm itches. I think the production design for this movie looks surprisingly good. All this, well, a lot of the sets that are made for this movie look really, really good, especially for uh, this being a bit of a lower budget movie. The the geothermal power plant that Gamera visits halfway through the movie looks fantastic. The Tokyo set looks really good. Uh, the set on Oshima Island looks really good. Um, when Gamera appears, for, when when Gamera is first awakened and he's erupting out of out of the ground and there's light and there's snow and ice being billowed out all, all over the place there's a shit ton of smoke being billowed out all over the place when gamera shows up it's an awesome awesome scene um and just overall the production designs for this movie i i think they're they're legitimately good. I, I do think that they look good for a movie of this budget. They're well made. They're well constructed. They actually do look like real um, places that a giant monster would be and not um, not just sets for a guy in a rubber suit to stomp around and beat the shit out of things with. Though they are those. They're certainly well done, though. Um, pro number... Four is a friend of mine recently told me that he doesn't like the fact that the first Gamma movie is in black and white. And I can understand why some people wouldn't like the fact that this movie is in black and white. Uh, and I don't know for absolute certain why this movie was in black and white, which I think makes it might make it the last giant monster movie to ever be done in black and white. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was the last giant monster movie to be in black and white. So I'm not sure if it was because the budget was so low for this movie or it was Noriaki Yuaka's decision to shoot it in black and white. And I still stand by the by my theory that it's a mix of both. While no doubt this movie was a bit of a lower budgeted movie, uh, because this movie was trying to follow in the footsteps of Godzilla, I feel like that Noriaki Yuasa decided, well, I think that having this movie be in black and white may be a contributing factor to people liking this movie. And in my case, at least, I actually like the fact that this movie is in black and white. I would like to see this in color, of course, because uh, the Gamma movies are all very colorful. And I think if this movie was in color, it would look a lot better cinematography-wise. Um, because the cinematography for this movie is... At times it's good, but for a lot of times it's really generic. But I really, I really like the black and white tone for this movie. Um, it sets the mood for a bit of a darker, more not necessarily violent, but more serious monster movie. And because Gamera starts out his career as a bad guy, I think having this movie, um, it being black and white, kind of adds to that idea and adds to this movie's tone. Um, same reason why the original Gojira was in black and white. Well, it was a bit of a different reason, but you know what I mean? The black and white tone to the original Gojira adds to the movie's dooming and depressing tone. Uh, and this movie does that to a lesser extent, but still, I do like the black and white for this movie. I think it looks good. Um, so yeah. Pro number, let's see, one, two, three. Pro number five is Gamera himself. I really like Gamera in, in this first film, even though he's a bit of a generic... Well, actually, no. Personality-wise, he's kind of a generic monster. Uh, he's just a big, giant, hungry predator that's going around looking for food. Kind of like Zetus and Gamera the Brave. Now, I'll get touch on that when I get to Gamera the Brave. But um, he's just a big, giant, massive predator going around looking for food. But he's a fun uh, – well, no, he's not fun. It's fun to watch this big, giant, hungry predator fuck shit up looking for food. Um, 
I like Gamera's roar. I like Gamera's design in this movie. The 65 uh, Gamera suit, as I will call it. Uh, because Gamera doesn't really change his appearance from movie to movie. Well, he does, but he doesn't change his appearance drastically from film to film. Um, that doesn't really come around until the Heisei series, or at least post Showa series. But still, I don't mind. Uh, I, I like the 65 Gamera design. It might be my second favorite uh, Showa Gamera design. Now, again, his. Is there's only like really four Gamera designs for the Showa Gamera series. Um, my least favorite probably would definitely have to be the suit that they used uh, for the last couple of Gamera movies. But still, uh, I really do like uh, the, the design for Gamera in this movie. Um, Gamera has a huge head. He's got sort of... He's got... Not necessarily long arms, but really bulky arms. Uh, his shell is big and bombastic. It takes up a lot of the screen. Uh, when Gamera breathes fire, it, it's an awesome sight. Uh, when he roars, it's an awesome sight. When he's going on a rampage throughout um, throughout the film, it looks great, which, which leave me to the special effects just a minute. But I really like Gamera in this movie. Uh, he's just a big, badass, hungry mammoth of destruction. Um, and he's so fun to watch. He's easily the best thing about this movie. I know that's an obvious thing. Well, duh, of course. Uh, it's a monster movie. This guy is the title monster. Of course, he would be the best thing. But he really is the best thing about this movie, in my opinion. So that'll lead me into the next pro that I have. Let's see. One, two, three. Pro number six is the special effects for this movie are pretty damn solid for 1965. I do believe a couple underlings of A.G. Subaraya did work on the special effects for this film. And for the most part, they look pretty damn solid. Uh, like I said, the sets are well made. They're very well constructed. They look awesome when they're destroyed. Uh, the Gamera suit is well constructed. There's a couple flaws in the effects where you can tell that Gamera's arms are like segmented. There's a piece here. There's another piece that was either sewn or glued on. Then the hand was was sewn or glued on. Uh, so Gamera's arms, you can tell that they're segmented at times. But still, uh, the Gamera suit is well constructed. And it goes through quite a hellacious beating. Uh, and it stays pretty well intact for the, throughout the film. It looks pretty good. Uh, there's some good blue screen effects. There's also some bad ones. Um well, just like the original Gojira, of course, but still. Um, the fire effects look great. Whenever Gamera is surrounded by flames, it's an awesome, awesome sight. Uh, whenever Gamera breathes his fire, it's pretty It's pretty seamlessly executed, even though it's clearly just a type of puppet that just has a flamethrower in its mouth. It's still really well constructed, even though there is one scene where you can clearly see the flamethrower inside Gamera's mouth. Um, but... It's 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 minor, and if you're really okay, aside from that scene, if you're trying not to find the flamethrower inside Gamera's mouth, you're not really going to find it. Um, overall, the special effects are really solid, especially for a movie uh, this typical, and for a movie being like this in the, in the mid '60s. Good job, Dai. Except for the planes. <laughs> Dai can really not do planes. Oh my god. That is the absolute worst aspect of da no, not the absolute worst, but that's one of the worst aspects of <laughs> excuse me, of Dai special effects is that their planes always look really shitty. Shitty. <sighs> so yeah. Uh, the planes don't look good, but overall, the special effects are still pretty solid. And the last pro that I have is the monster action throughout the movie is fairly entertaining. There's a lot of monster scenes. Gamera's initial, like I said, his, when he's rising out of the snow, uh, like the first like five minutes in the movie, you see Gamera. Uh, when he destroys the planes, and he destroys the ship. Uh, then when he destroys the lighthouse, then the geothermal power plant, then he moves on and gets frozen and unveils his his spinning abilities. Well, that's another thing, too. When Gamera is spinning around like a flying saucer, it does look pretty damn 
uh, seamless, even though later in the series, there's a lot of moments where you can clearly see the uh, strings holding up Gamera, but that's neither here nor there. Um, then there's Gamera's attack on Tokyo. Uh, then when he's at the oil refinery, Gamera has a crap ton of screen time in this movie. Uh, though it's going to be to be expected. This movie is only an hour and 18 minutes long, so that that is a bit of a problem, but whatever. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's 78 minutes long, hour and 18 minutes. Um, but so Gamera does have a crap ton of screen time in this movie, so you can't say that this movie is not about Gamera, unlike the next movie. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, the, the monster action is really fun. It's very it's very entertaining. It keeps your eyes glued to the screen. And overall, it's good fun stuff. So with all those all these good things to say about the original Gamera movie, are there any cons? Yes, quite a few. <laughs> See, I have one, two, three, four, five, six cons with this movie. The con number one is that this movie's music. It's not very good. It's very generic, very standard giant monster movie music. And let's see, who is the composer? Uh, doesn't say. <laughs> how, how convenient. But regardless, the, the, the guy who did the music for this movie, the music's not very good. Like I said, it's very generic. Uh, Gamera doesn't have a classic theme. He actually, he won't even get that for another, uh, 30 years. Well, technically he does, but that music sucks. So we'll just say he doesn't get his own iconic theme 30 years later, but still, um, the music is not very good. At least it is giant monster movie music. So that's, that's one good thing I can say about it. But overall, the music itself, it, it's not very good. I, I could have been a lot better. Um, con number two is that I think this movie is too short. This is an example where I think a movie should have been at least an hour and a half long. But this movie isn't. This is a very short movie. It's only an hour. Like I said, it's only an hour and 18 minutes. Um, I actually think we should. Or actually, no. Yeah, I'm going to say that. We should have gotten just a little bit more Gamera action, um, even though Gamera does have a crap ton of screen time in this movie. Uh, still, I could have gone for a little bit more. I could have gone for a little bit more human drama, a little bit, just not without to just without Toshio, but I'll get to that in just a minute. But I think this movie is a little too short. If you had, okay, if you couldn't make an hour and a half long, you could have at least made it like 85 minutes or 86 minutes long. So then it feels a bit more like a complete film, whereas in its current state, for me, it just falls a little too short. Um, con number three is that, oh my God, is this movie's pacing fucking horrendous. This I will wholeheartedly agree with Bill on his review for Gamma the Giant Monster. The movie is horrendously paced um <laughs> the beginning is very quickly paced and the ending is not as quickly paced as the beginning but it still is relatively quickly paced but the second act at least with the human stuff just comes to a screeching halt and man is it jarring Despite this movie being on only an hour and 18 minutes, the second half, when Gamera is not on screen, is so hard to sit through. So goddamn hard to swallow. And, oh my god, this, this, this is one of the most poorly paced monster movies I have ever seen in my life. Not as bad as something like Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah or King Kong vs. Godzilla. Or, hell, even another Gamera movie. Uh, what was it? Gamera vs. Gauss. But this movie is not paced well at all. Uh, and that's why I think this movie should have been a little longer. Um, maybe it would have been more effective to uh, 
help the pacing be a little bit better if the movie was a little longer. Just put the right scenes in the right areas and the movie's pacing would have increased dramatically. Um, let's see. Con number four is that this movie is very, very derivative of the original Gojira. It's not this movie's biggest problem, but it still definitely does suffer from being so derivative of the original Gojira. Of course, Dr. Hidaka being a massive ripoff of Dr. Yamane, I've already discussed that. Um, Gamera being a monster that has atomic origins. Well, not in this version. Keep in mind, I am reviewing the original Japanese cut of Gamera. Uh, I refuse to acknowledge the existence of the American versions. Uh, they basically cut Godzilla King of the Monster to it, specifically the most famous version being Gamera the Invincible with two M's. Um, Gamera's origin is a bit different in that, whereas in the, in the Japanese version, he supposedly is a monster that comes from the continent of Atlantis, which the Heisei series will uh, elaborate more on. Uh, in a better way, but here he's somehow tied to Atlantis. Uh, whereas in the, in the American version, Gamera is just a giant prehistoric turtle. So in that case, I actually do think the American version is a little better, but I still do prefer the Japanese version. Um, but still, Gamera is awakened by an atomic bomb going off, just like the original Gojira. Uh, he goes on a rampage throughout Tokyo and in, in near the ending of the movie, which is a really dark and powerful scene. Not as powerful as, as Gojira. Um, both monsters be began their careers as bad guys and also in black and white. There's a lot of similarities between... The oh yeah, and there's also a love triangle that goes on. Uh, though really, it, here it's nowhere near as prevalent and it's not as forced. Actually, no, I'd say it, it's not as forced as it is in Gojira, but it's a lot more pointless here because it's just, it's really, you're going to go for a love triangle in this movie. Why? <laughs> um, but so this movie is very derivative of the original Gojira. I can understand why, but at least there is enough original material in this movie for it to be or uh, for it to be its own thing. Of course it would. It gets 11 more movies in this franchise, so obviously it was. But still, there are a lot of elements from the original Gojira that can be seen in the first Gamera movie. So that is a bit of an issue. It's not a huge issue, but it is an issue nonetheless. Um, con number five. Oh, boy. Aside from Dr. Hidaka, the rest of the human cast is piss poor. The military characters, they're not insufferable. They're just really typical. Um, they're very one-note personality-wise, which is to be expected. Bo Carrier, why does Gamera like kids? Turtles and children do not mix. I don't know why Gamera likes kids. And actually, in this movie, it doesn't make sense for Gamera to like kids because he's just a big, angry predator uh, looking for sustenance. He's not looking to save kids. And not to mention, he goes on a massive rampage throughout Tokyo and he kills thousands of people. No doubt some of those people are kids. So the fact that Gamera saves a kid and it saves Toshio, it boggles the brain. I just kind of feel like that's something they should have saved for Gamma versus Gauss, but still, whatever. Um, I'm not going to establish that because uh, both Brandon Tenold and Bill have elaborated on that further, but that's my two cents on it. It just doesn't make any sense. They should have saved it for Gamma versus Gauss. Um, but what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. The the rest of the human cast in this movie, they're just they're paper thin. Again, the military, all, I agree, it's still weird. The, the military characters are okay. They're just really typical, but uh, Kyoko is paper thin. Aoyagi is paper thin. He's just a generic cute girl and a generic reporter. Toshio's family, they're just bland and boring and one-dimensional. I'm saving Toshio for a little later. Um, but just the rest of the human cast, they're all they're all just nothing special. They're, they're typical giant monster characters, and they're not they're not very good for it. And easily, 
Con number six, the biggest problem with this movie is Toshio. Oh my god. Do I absolutely hate Toshio in this movie. He really, really makes parts of this movie really difficult to sit through for me. Because Toshio is a complete idiot and a complete idiot. Dick. When he tries, when he's trying to sabotage plans to take out a super mega ultra death threat against his country that tried to kill him and his family earlier in the movie, I can't support this kid. I, I just, I kind of feel like you're supposed to like him because he's a kid. Can't do it. Cannot do it. I can't stand Toshio. He's a complete idiot and a complete asshole, to quote Bill. I'm not going to lie. And he sums it up best. Um, his, his desire to... His desire to save Gamera makes no sense because, like I said, him Gamera saving Toshio might have been just a fluke. So it makes no sense for this kid to suddenly have this have this connection to Gamera. Well, okay, I guess it kind of does, but makes sense. But can't you see that Gamera is only interested in feeding? And not to mention, can't you see that Gamera is going on a fucking rampage, killing people, and you still say that he's not a mean monster? Are you out of your fucking mind? You dumb little shit. I don't like Toshio. He's one of the worst things about... No, he's the worst thing about this movie. And he's one of the reasons why nobody... Actually, yeah, Omega Picture. That's a good way to put it. Gamera didn't save Toshio. He spared him. That's a good way of putting it, actually. But yeah, I can't stand Toshio. He's the absolute worst thing about this movie. And he's the reason why I don't watch the original Gamera as often as I would like to even though it is one of my favorite monster movies, and it still is. So with all that said, um, despite all these movies' problems, and believe me, this is a flawed movie. I'm not coming out and saying that it's an unsung masterpiece. I don't think that it's one of the most underrated monster movies ever made. It has its fans, no doubt, of course, me being one of them. Uh, and many do recognize it as a good film. But I can I can see why it's not con considered to be one of the absolute greatest of monster movies. Uh, but it still is one of my personal favorites. And it is one of my favorite Gamera movies, of course. So, score was a little difficult for me to come up with. Because I struggled on whether or not I should rate this on two different scales or rate it on just one. But ultimately, I decided I'm just going to rate it on two because what really matters is the personal score. So objectively, I, I will be giving this movie a 6.5 out of 10. Ironically, because this movie came out in 1965. But still, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. It is, more, it is more good than bad, objectively. But still, there's quite a bit of bad to see here. And while it is a good start to a decent franchise, it's still not without its flaws. Uh, however, on a personal level, I will be giving this movie an 8.5 out of 10. I really do like this movie. Uh, I, I enjoy watching it from time to time. It's an entertaining monster movie. Uh, and I do recommend it, especially if you're a monster fan. I do recommend you do check it out. Just stick with the Japanese version. I know a lot of people may say that the, the American version is better because it's a lot simpler. Nah, just stick with the Japanese version. Um, so yeah, 8.5 out of 10 personally, 6.5 out of 10 objectively. So post your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and share this video with your friends. And look forward to the next review as I talk about easily the best Gamera movie in the original Showa series. Gamma versus Barrigan. And I will see you guys in the next video.